I want to tell you a story that's changing the lives of people all over the world. It's not a story that anyone made up. Instead, it is a story from the Bible, which is the word of the Most High God. Therefore, it's true and reliable. There is only one God, and He is the Most High God. The Most High God is more powerful than any person, spirit, religious teacher, government, or God that people worship. He existed in the beginning before there was anything else. When God began to create things, He just spoke and everything came to being. He created everything on earth and in heaven. He created things we cannot see, like angels. Angels are beautiful spirits who worship and serve God in heaven. God also created everything we can see, the sun, moon, stars, the earth, and all the plants and animals. Finally, he created man and woman in his own image. When God created everything, he said, this is really good. God gave the man and woman a beautiful garden to live in. Each day they walked together and had a wonderful relationship with him and with each other. God told them to take care of the garden and to enjoy everything. He gave them a special command. He said, you may eat the fruit of any of the trees in the garden. There is just one tree in the middle of the garden that you may not eat from. If you eat the fruit from that tree, you will die. The man and woman's relationship with God and with each other was perfect. God created us to have this kind of relationship with Him and with each other. The man and the woman had a wonderful relationship with God and each other. However, do you remember the angels God created? One of the angels became very proud. He wanted to be like God and to have the other angels worship Him instead of God. But there is only one God to be worshipped. Therefore God cast this disobedient angel out of heaven. We call that angel the devil. God also cast out of heaven all the other angels who followed Him. They are demons or evil spirits. One day, the devil tempted the woman to eat the fruit from the one tree that was forbidden. He asked her, did God really say you couldn't eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said, no, we may eat of any tree except from the one tree in the middle of the garden. If we eat it or touch it, we will die. But the devil told her, you won't die, but will instead become like God. The woman listened to the devil and ate the fruit. Then she gave it to her husband and he ate. That day both of them sinned. Sin is any time we disobey God's commands. God is righteous and holy. He must punish us when we disobey him. God cast the man and the woman out of the garden and their relationship with God was broken forever. Like that man and woman, all of us have sinned. Our relationship with God is broken and the result of sin is eternal punishment in hell when we die. We cannot live forever with God as we were designed. What can be done? Over time, the number of people on earth increased. Even though each of them sinned, God still loved them very much and wanted them to have a relationship with Him. God gave ten commandments to the people through one of His servants. Remember, God is perfect and holy, and we must be perfect and holy to live with Him. The Ten Commandments taught people how to live right with God and each other. Some of the commandments were, do not worship other gods or make idols. Honor your parents. Do not lie, steal, murder. Don't desire the things other people have or commit adultery. However, no one was able to obey all these commands. Each time they sinned, 
God allowed them to confess their sins and offer a sacrifice to take their place of punishment. This sacrifice was shedding the blood of a perfect animal. As they offered the sacrifice, they would ask God to forgive them and let the animal die in their place. Only by the shedding of blood can a person's sins be forgiven. However, as time went by, their hearts were no longer sorry for their sins. Instead, their sacrifices just became empty rituals. God said, I've had enough of your empty sacrifices. Through the keeping of rules and the sacrificing of animals, the people realized that they were unable to come back to God on their own. What could be done? God still loved the people of the world very much. Therefore, at just the right time, God sent Jesus to show people how to mend their relationship with himself. Who is Jesus? Jesus is God's one and only son. Jesus was a wonderful teacher. People loved to listen to him because he taught them how to come back to God. Jesus was also a powerful miracle worker. One day, many people came to listen to Jesus teach all day. Because the people were hungry, Jesus took five loaves of bread and two fish, blessed them, and then began to pass them out to the people. That day, over 5,000 people ate and were satisfied. Jesus' power is able to satisfy our needs. Another time, Jesus crossed a large lake on a boat with his followers. While Jesus was asleep, a powerful storm came up. Jesus' followers woke Jesus up and said, Master, we are about to die. Jesus stood up and spoke to the wind and waves. Quiet, be still. Immediately, the wind and rain stopped. Jesus' power is greater than the natural world. When Jesus arrived at the other side, he met a violent man living among the graves. He was filled with many demons and was very dangerous. When Jesus saw that man, he loved even him. He spoke to the demons and said, Leave. Immediately they left him, and the man was in his right mind. Jesus' power is greater than evil spirits. On another day, a close friend of Jesus became sick and died. Several days later, Jesus arrived at his friend's tomb. When he saw where his friend was buried, Jesus began to cry. Jesus went to the front of the tomb and said, Friend, come out. His friend walked out of the tomb alive. Jesus' power is even greater than death. Jesus did all these things because he loves us and wants us to come back to God. Jesus was God's son, a wonderful teacher and a powerful miracle worker. And of all the people who ever lived, Jesus alone never sinned. He alone never deserved to be punished for sin. So many people loved Jesus. However, some religious leaders were jealous of Jesus. They arrested him, put him on trial, and decided to kill him. They placed Jesus on a large cross. They nailed his hands and feet to the cross. As he hung on the cross, Jesus' precious blood dripped down to the ground. He cried out, It is finished. Jesus became the perfect and final sacrifice. God loves us and allowed Jesus to die on the cross in our place. Jesus bore the punishment of all of our sins. Only through the shedding of blood can our sins be forgiven? Someone had to pay for our sins. After Jesus died that day, his friends took his body and placed it in a secure tomb. However, this story doesn't end here. On the third day after this, Jesus rose from the dead and spent many days showing people that he was alive again. He proved that he was the Son of God. 
Then he returned to his Father in heaven. Jesus took our punishment and now provides a way for us to come back to God. Only he can show us the way back to God. While Jesus was on earth, he told a story. A young man said to his father, Give me my share of the inheritance. The young man set off for a distant country and there wasted his money in wild living. After he had spent everything, he hired himself out to do the lowest job, feeding pigs. One day, he came to his senses. He thought, how many of my father's hired workers have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Please just make me like one of your hired workers. So he got up and went to his father. But while he was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion for him. He ran to his son, threw his arms around him and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servant, Quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was lost and now has been found. All of us are like the young son. We have all sinned and left God our father. But like the son, we can come back to God. We all must ask forgiveness for our sins and return to God to have the life he wants us to have as his children. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Would you like to let Jesus bring you back to God? Only Jesus can bring us back to God. To go back to God, you must admit to God that you have sinned against Him. You must believe that Jesus died in your place to take your punishment and ask God to forgive you. You must put your trust in Jesus to bring you back and give you eternal life as God's child. From that point on, you must obey Jesus as your new master. The Bible says, For God so loved the people of the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. You may go to God as the young man did when he returned to his father, saying something like this, God, I know you love me. I've sinned against you, I'm sorry. I believe and trust in Jesus as the perfect sacrifice to take my punishment. God, please forgive me. I agree to joyfully obey Jesus as my master from this moment on. Thank you for my new and eternal life as your child. Why don't you call out to him right now? If you truly called out to God, you are now God's child forever. God wants you to let others know that you are his child. God's plan is not only to bring you back to him, but to bring back your family and friends through you so that their relationship with God and one another can be restored. Whom do you know that needs to hear this story?